Good morning, everyone. My name is Emma Brown, and I'm the founder of Wimble. We're a care tech company based here in Ottawa, Canada. On the left of the slide is a picture of my brother Harrison visiting the Georgia Aquarium. Harrison is in, is in his early 30s and loves to travel. He also has spina bifida and requires some personal care assistance with activities of daily living. When Harrison wants to go somewhere, whether to scuba dive, to play in a sled hockey tournament, to attend a family funeral or a wedding, or a local music festival or conference, he doesn't have to just figure out how he's getting there and where he's going to stay. He also has to plan how he's going to go to the bathroom, change his clothes, and many other logistics that disabled travelers must grapple with. Harrison is not alone. Social media sites are flooded with posts from travelers looking for caregiver recommendations for destinations around the world. The current options available are not ideal nor efficient to say the least. These include hassling grumpy sisters like me, relying on aging parents and spouses, coercing friends, taking risks on unvetted strangers from the internet, hiring local home care companies at each and every destination, hiring luxury travel nurses, or just not going at all. To solve this problem and fill many, many other gaps in the caregiving space, Wimble is an on-demand platform that connects people in need of urgent or short-term assistance access to a vetted, experienced pool of care providers that have availability to fill that gap. This applies to people at home, at work, at events, and yes, while out exploring the world. We're currently operating and growing with a pretty scrappy no-code MVP, but the accessible user-centric platform we are building towards will make it even easier to lay out your needs, your budget, and your preferences so we can find you a perfect match. We know building a global marketplace is not easy, but we do have an ace up our sleeve with our event service. We are educating and providing on-site attendant services to venues and organizers like music festivals, conferences, hotels, stadiums, to ensure that caregiving becomes a standard component of on-site accessibility measures, just like sign language interpreters, closed captioning services, ramps, and elevators. These contracts fuel the growth of our marketplace by essentially paying us to market to our target users, bringing in a predictable source of revenue to balance out fluctuating demand from individuals and help us seed new cities with lucrative contract sizes to attract new caregivers. Home care is an almost $400 billion industry globally and growing. However, the current players are operating under antiquated housebound care models and leaving so much opportunity on the table. It's actually a bit challenging to quantify our potential, but looking at the investments already made into the sign language interpretation industry, the size of the disabled travel market, and the multi-billion dollar global music festival industry alone, we know there is serious revenue at stake here, and we need to move fast to create and dominate this largely untapped travel and event space with our care, our model of caring for people wherever they want to be. We are live in Ottawa, Canada, and now that we have proof of concept with over 2,000 hours of on-demand care provided to date, we are ready to scale this up. We would love to connect with any future investors, corporate partners, or new users who have places to go and people to see. A world with Wimble widely available means a world in which Harrison or people like Katie can spontaneously hop on a plane to California or a subway to a local film festival and know that a vetted experienced caregiver will be waiting at the other end. No haggling with grumpy sisters necessary. Thank you. Great presentation. I love the video. Um, I know you mentioned B2B partnerships and the untapped market specifically within the music industry. Can you expand on the strategy for gaining new B2B partnerships? Good question. Um, so right now we've been working uh, primarily in the Ottawa area with local music festivals. So for example, Ottawa hosts Canada's sixth largest music festival um, and they were one of our early adopters. We just finished the second year with them a couple of weeks ago. Um, and basically it's a matter of approaching the festivals, finding out what they're already doing in terms of accessibility measures. Um, as I'm sure everyone can imagine, it's a it's a quite a range of of everything from pretty much nothing to um, having having a strategy in place and then finding where we can add value in that chain. So I'll give you an example with Blues Fest, again one of the larger music festivals in Canada. They already had a team of volunteers who provide accessibility support. Um, so that involves what they call um, light support. Uh, so it kind of helping people with directions, helping people find the accessible viewing platforms 
some pushing of devices if if needed on the on the uneven terrain, that kind of thing. But as soon as you cross that boundary into the personal care, the volunteers, even some of whom are our personal support workers or home care aides themselves, aren't allowed to go as a volunteer without that liability protection. So that's where we kind of step in and take the take their accessibility that last mile, basically. Wonderful. All right. Next question goes to Zach Curry. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. Can you talk a little bit more about the user experience? Uh, is there a cost to the user? How does the cost model and how do you generate revenue? Yes. So we're really running off a, as I mentioned in the video, a very scrappy MVP and we have a very basic pricing model right now. So we're kind of in that proof of concept phase. So we're charging an hourly rate to individual users. Um, and then we have a separate more <laughs> margin, um, more margin room rate for event organizers. Um, and then in the future, as our, our actual technology platform develops and as our value add to both sides of the marketplace develops, um, we will definitely have space to start looking into some recurring SaaS revenue as well. Great, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, before the next question, we would like to see the live demo that they've prepared for us. Um, Nico wants to respond to the judge's question using AI. So this next one is, we'll go ahead and take the next judge's question, and then Nico will respond using AI. Is, do I have that right? Is that what we're doing? Uh, so that might be for the next company, sorry. I think that's for oh, so for I was, I thought that was part of this one. I was like, no, no one wants to see a live care, give, a live demo of personal care assistance. <laughs> oh my goodness sake. I got ahead of myself. Wow. All right. Ignore me. And let's listen to Katie's question. Hi. Um, I really like this. I think it's really interesting. And I'm interested in your strategy. Uh, if you are going direct to consumer, how are you going to market? What's your plan to market to the consumer? Yeah, more good questions. So the events, um, the events model, going back to the B2B side first, the events model is something we stumbled into um, after some customer discovery rounds. Um, and it, it solved a lot of problems for us around like seeding the marketplace, getting some guaranteed shifts for the caregivers because all of our caregivers are independent contractors and have to have their own liability insurance. So I don't want to bring them on and get them to pay before we actually have hours to offer them. So it had that huge value for us, but then it also helps us market to our target users where they go to events and they're out and about in the city and see um, and interact with, with actual Wimble care providers. Um, we also in Ottawa for our pilot trial, we've been, very heavily leveraging um, all sort of local parasports organizations, um, local disability support groups. Um, we've started working with a lot of different case managers from different um, disability support organizations. Uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of um, organic growth so far. And then a big part of our next fundraising round is going to be figuring out a more scalable marketing strategy for sure. Fantastic. Okay, we have less than a minute left. So I'm going to ask Chris to ask your question and let's see if we can do this quickly. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Um, hi, Emma. Great job. Congrats. Um, quickly on kind of the hourly breakdown, um, kind of like traditional agency caregivers might be 35 to 40 bucks an hour. Um, the caregivers or aides themselves are, are making like less than half that or maybe half that at best. Um, I think it's why there's a massive shortage for those agencies in terms of the the caregiver workers. Um, are you more of a premium product? Are you in line? Are you more attractive for the caregiver? If you could talk quickly about that, would be great. Yeah, right now I've kind of just sacrificed the margin to get us off the ground and then i um, going to build that out down the road, the event side also helps us. Um, so right now from a price point, we charge $35 an hour. And then we cannot do this without caregivers who are in short supply right now in the healthcare industry. So we're paying them a premium of $30 an hour. So we're kind of trying to, to um, attract both sides by having a, a, a good price point on the demand side and then a good um, pay rate on the supply side to keep them. Um, and again, that events 
um, events model really unlocks the, the exciting margins for us because I, I charge them a lot more than I do individual users. And that's where we build out a lot more of our margin. I think as the platform gets more sophisticated down the road as well, there's a huge difference between, well, not a huge difference, but there is a big difference between going and helping someone with like a complex, um, almost like medical equipment intervention style of toileting versus going and helping someone with like companionship or errands or housekeeping. So as the platform gets more com uh, technologically complex, we'll be able to track, okay, are we paying this out at like a premium rate where we really need a high skilled caregiver? Or are we paying this out at a rate where like a university student who has a clean rep background check could be doing it? So there will be more play in that um, moving yeah, forward. Yeah. The, the margins are not great right yeah. now on the individual. But I, I also think as it relates to travel, I think a lot of families, if they had something like this, they'd probably pay a premium so they exactly, could take yeah. the vacation and feel comfortable about it versus not taking the vacation. So exactly. Yeah. You know, and we, the, the we, way that um sorry, I know I'm running out of time. So just mute me. Um, but the way we're doing it right now in the travel space is the clients are just dictating their budget. So yep. they basically fill it in and take form that says, here's where I'm going, these dates, here's how much care I need per day, here's my overall budget. Um, and then we put that out to the pool of caregivers. So if you have a low budget, but wow. you're going to kind of an attractive destination um, and there's care who are like, yeah, sure. I go to Disney World for a hundred bucks a day. Great. Um, if you're <laughs> going to um, kind of a, a less appealing destination, but you have a higher budget, then then it's um, also helps you find something. Gotcha. That's super smart. Thank you. Great job.